Okay, so uh, we are here today talking to Andrea Antonio. Uh, she's a singer, and uh, this is part of uh, the Fire Style project where we're exploring uh, creativity, style, and identity during the lockdown. So, welcome, Andrea. Uh, Thank you very much, Sandra. <laughs> Thank you for the invitation. Oh, you're welcome. You're, you're so delighted that you could uh, give us this talk. Um, so, tell us about yourself a little bit and how did you get into singing? So, yeah, my name, first of all, is Andrea Antonio. Yeah. Um, as you said already, I'm a singer, a musician and a vocal coach uh, based in London for the last 10 years. Uh, but I was born and raised in Cyprus, in the little island in the Mediterranean, uh, by a Cypriot dad and a Finnish Swedish mom. And, uh, and yes, and I moved here to London to study uh, 10 years ago. Wow. That's amazing. And then you made your whole uh, life in London after that. Whole life, work, everything, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. I remember in one of our conversations, uh, you told us about a magical trip uh, you did to Cuba. So I'd love you if you could tell us about that experience a little bit. Yes, it was absolutely amazing. Amazing experience. So since I was a little girl, Cuba was for me a fascination with the with salsa, the dancing, the music, the cigars, the cars, everything. So going there and living the experience in real life was per perhaps the most memorable experience I had in my life so far. So I went there with a band that I worked with called Classico Latino to record an album, uh, their new album, Havana Classic, where I appeared as a guest. So um, apart from us, we also collaborated with some um, local Cuban musicians on the album. And that collaboration with the locals was for me the highlight of the trip, just to see how they uh, experience music, how they, they perform music with their whole bodies. They're so joyful when they do, when they play music. It's really as if they, you know, they breathe in life, and they breathe out all the, the struggles, all the, the, the poverty, the difficulties that you can see in Cuba. You, it's, it's, really, it's really apparent, you can see it. Um, and for me, when, when seeing them, it became really clear that music is for them a way to survive. It's, it's just, it's their safety haven. Mm. Uh, so that was a highlight of the trip. And also, um, you know, listening, from every corner in Havana Vieja, the old Havana, <laughs> listening from every corner, music, people dancing in the roads, the old architecture, the vintage cars, the colors, everything conveys that uh, feeling of sweet nostalgia. It was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it had an impact on you uh, because you still remember of it so fondly. Um, Definitely, I think it will always help. <laughs> And then uh, another thing that I wanted to ask you uh, with your singing. So you, how did you get into singing? And tell us a little bit about the variety uh, of work that you do, because, you know, you sing in different languages as well. So I'd love you to talk a little bit about that. So starting from the very beginning, I grew up in a musical family. Uh, my yeah. sister, my older sister and my older brother are both musicians. My sister is a classical singer and an owner, an owner of two music schools in Cyprus. And my brother is a flamenco guitarist. He lived Absolutely. many years in Spain and then moved yeah. to Cyprus. So already, while being very young, I had those different styles of music in my life, in my everyday life. Um, I started taking formal lessons, like uh, piano lessons with my sister when I was six years old and then singing. I had classical training first because of my sister uh, being a classical singer and then gradually I went into modern singing when I came here I studied jazz uh, then I met with Latin musicians through my dancing as well because I was trained as a Latin dancer so one occasion brought the other occasion meeting after meeting so I ended up being a lot in in the Latin jazz uh, scene in London and also Greek music that's amazing that's so rich. That's amazing. So, so Andrea, how has the pandemic then um, affected the way you work? 
um, with gigs and you know your voice coach as well so uh, yeah. sorry singing coach so how how did it affect you it totally it affected me in every possible way as everyone i suppose um obviously all concerts have been cancelled since march mm -hmm. um but luckily i'm able to teach online i have all my students almost all my students online um, I also started doing online concerts, which was very, a very unique experience at the beginning. I had the first one, a pre-recorded um, performance for a care house, and I have two more coming, uh, coming up on the 16th of June and the 26th of June. Yeah. Um, but creative, uh, creatively, um, it has been really active, really productive period, because there was more time to do things. And uh, we had time finali to finalize, finally, uh, <laughs> the video clip of uh, one of the songs of our album, La Negra. And um, basically, we started doing the filming in February, just before the lockdown. So we're, we were so lucky <laughs> to be able to do it before yeah. it happened. Uh, and then with our creative team uh, in different parts of the world, in Greece, here, Cyprus, we made the video clip uh, happen, yeah. and um, I'm very happy with the with the result. It was a totally new experience for me. It's my first video clip. Um, yeah, that was uh, that was the most important thing I would say that happened in, in quarantine. Also, also uh, with all the time that we have, there's more time to go in depth. Uh, in, in practicing and in researching new material, but also acquiring new skills like um, playing a new instrument. For me, it was a guitar. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. That's, a, that's, to. that's so cool. Playing <laughs> <laughs> the piano, but the guitar was something I wanted to do and I didn't have the time. Yeah. Um, also, learning how to record at home. Yeah. And with one of my collaborators, Pablo Scarvalho. Uh, we uh, started doing some uh, home recordings and uh, we released one and we're going to release more uh, in the next few weeks. So that was a you know, new school for me. That's amazing. But there were pluses and minuses creatively. Yes. Wise, yeah. Oh, okay, I understand. So, you know, so obviously you've, you know, make the most of um, your free time. Let's say you found a way to um, be creative um so what so obviously this is you know keep inspiring you and in touch with your identity i am assuming so can you tell us about this a little bit is this something you do consciously um to keep in touch with yourself yes 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 there are times i think for everyone that you feel less inspired yeah. that you feel when you're in a stagnation mode and then there are times that oh my god there's so much so many things I can do and you feel you have lots of energy. Um, so those ups and downs are normal. Um, mm. For me, what keeps me inspired is being close to nature, noticing the beauty around me. Beauty is perhaps the most important thing, you know, and everyone interprets that differently, mm -hmm. obviously. It can be a, a beautiful painting, a beautiful song, a beautiful tree. Um, what else keeps me inspired? Um, listening to music, listening to full albums from beginning to end, understanding mm -hmm. the journey of the artist. Lately, um, I've become obsessed with vinyls. Uh, and that happened actually, the first vinyl that I've heard, funnily enough, was our own with Roman God. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that was the reason I said, no, now is the time to actually get that vinyl player, buy it and um, I started collecting very small collections so far um, mm -hmm. and um, that really is a beautiful experience because you're just sitting down you don't skip any track you don't have the need to react to it as we do on social media yeah. you just sit there you know, with your senses and enjoy the music um, that's really 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 inspiring mm, and I believe that by keeping yourself active and keep growing, keep learning, it's a very important element of, of being inspired. 
Uh, I liked how you you connected the question of you keep, how you keep uh, it being inspired and how you, you know, keep um, being, no, how you create your identity, how you try to create your identity. Because I believe those two aspects are interconnected. One feeds the other. So I think the more time we spend with ourselves, uh, trying to be inspired, try to understand how uh, we feel and what we need as, as, as human beings, as artists, uh, then that leads us to being truer uh, to ourselves, being closer to, to uh, our needs and our, our, um, our identity. So that, I believe, is what forms our identity as we, as we grow up. Oh, thank you, Andrea. You know, you are inspiration to us, uh, you know, your audiences and your friends. Um, so thank you so much for talking to us. And um, can you just um, let anybody know that um, where they can hear your amazing voice, where they can find your work? Uh, can you just quickly tell us um, if anyone is interested, where they can find you? Yes. So uh, our album with uh, my collaborator, Roman Gomez, uh, the album is called Encuentro. You can find that on Spotify, on Bandcamp, or you can order it uh, physical edition or vinyl. Um, I have lots of videos on my YouTube channel. If you put Andrea Antonio, uh, that's where you're gonna find also our latest video clip, La Negra. Um, and of course, on social media, I'm quite active. I put lots of things uh, every week. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Andrea. It's lovely to talk to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.